us about some few pictures on birth trauma. We discussed about this before. Uh, MDSN asked something synonymous, something similar last exam. There is high chances they ask it again. So you should be able to differentiate the picture A from picture B. So you should be able to differentiate what is called the caput cesudinium and cephalohematoma. Okay, this is very important. MDCN will definitely, they ask something like this. I'm not sure if they will repeat it again, but I think it's worth knowing birth trauma. So what is caput cesudinium? Let me show us these pictures here. Okay, let me show us another picture here. Doctors, can you see this picture? Caput cesudinium is basically swelling of the scalp from, uh, it's just like swelling, you can, can you see the, the baby here? Just above the scalp here, there's swelling. And mostly what causes this thing is when the child is stuck in the birth canal. Or maybe when the child is stuck in the birth canal, as the mother is contracting, the child is also feeling the same contraction on his head. So in such case, there's a swelling of the scalp. And this condition is okay. It's just normal reassuring. It's normally the, 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 the swelling goes away in a while. Okay? And very important is to differentiate caput cesudinium from cephalohematoma. Caput cesudinium does cross the suture line. It crosses the suture line. This is very important. Let me type. I think I need to type. You can see there's a suture line here. In between here, there's a suture line here. You can see the swelling is just crossing the suture line. You understand? So it's swelling here, just beneath the scalp here. And the swelling may be blood. Sometimes it can be associated with jaundice. Take note. I've explained jaundice before. Hematoma could result into jaundice. So sometimes it can be result into jaundice, just blood accumulation, but it crosses, it's not under the skull. It's just a little bit beneath the skull. Swelling of the scalp. And the major causes is mostly, mostly in case of obstructed lip. So contraction of the mother give an effect on the baby. Now, this is cephalohematoma. Cephalohematoma is subperiosteal bleeding. So beneath the periosteum, beneath the bone, bleeding is happening there. And if bleeding is happening beneath the bone, here it does not cross the suture line. Since the bleeding is beneath the bone, it doesn't cross the suture line. Are you getting me? So you should be able to differentiate between cephalohematoma and caput cesudinium. So the groove is the major thing. The suture line is what you use to differentiate them. And sometimes you can have bilateral cephalohematoma, you can have unilateral cephalohematoma. Sometimes you can see another swelling here. The major cause is just the same thing when the head is stuck in the bed canal. I believe I don't need, I don't think I need to write all this. Do I need to write, doctor? Do I need to write? <laughs> No. Yeah. Okay, there's only the right thing. I think you should just understand it is better. Okay, so this is caput cesidinium and cephalohematoma. Okay, and it takes a longer time for yeah. cephalohematoma to resolve. It can take months or weeks. Unlike the the um, caput cesidinium, might take probably weeks before it resolves. Okay. Please take note. Any question regarding cephalohematoma? Any question? Dr. Aisha? Please, sorry, which one do you say it takes no. months? Uh, to it resolve? takes months or weeks. It's, it takes longer which, time for cephalohematoma. Which one? Cephalohematoma. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Any other question? No. All right. In the absence of no question, let's continue. So, doctors, we should all be able to also identify this image. This is also another um, birth injury, very common in child. So what is, what is this called, doctor? Anybody remember? What is this? Abduchen palsy. Yes, this is called Abduchen palsy. 
is as a result of affection of the brachial plexus. There's brachial plexus injury. Are you getting me, doctor? We have two major things you need to know under the affection of the brachial plexus. The first one is the clumke, and the second one, and eh, sorry, the second one is clumke. The first one is the ebb palsy, ebb Duchenne palsy. And I will explain the major thing you need to remember. There, I will write it down. There's something we call the waiter tip. Waiter tip, you know, like somebody who wants to give a tip to someone, putting his hand behind. We are going to explain this. Okay? So it's mostly associated with the Ebb Duchenne palsy. Let me go to the whiteboard so I can type. Because I think I need to write one or two things on the Ebb Duchenne palsy. Okay, please take notes. Please take notes, please. This is very, very important. I take note. So let's start with the Ebb Duchenne. It's a nice coming from somewhere. Everything falls. Nice coming from. Let me check. Okay. All right. So let's continue. Let's continue. Let me go to the whiteboard. So for the ablution palsy, I told you this is breaking nerve. Or brachial plexus injury. No, it's a brachial plexus injury. Okay. This is brachial plexus injury. And it's very important for you to know the affected regions. So the C3 and the uh, to C4 are actually the one affected. C3, C4. Uh, some will say C3 to C5, okay? 3 to C5, I just put it there, uh, affected, okay? And the um, very important, what you should know is there is uh, what is called waiter's tip. And what is waiter's tip? Waiter's tip is associated with this. Waiter's tip. That is the deformity of the hand. So there is abduction of the hand, abduction, or abducted and internal rotation of the shoulder elbow is extended i want us to take now the elbow is extended and the forearm is pronated Here's what I mean by waiter's tip. Okay, somebody is saying something. So C5, C6, please confirm or it should be within C5, C6 or C3, C5. Different literatures give different distance, please, doctor. Please take notes. Different literatures give different region, but it shouldn't be more than, it shouldn't be more than C5, C6 within that region, please. Okay, Dr. Tolu. Somebody say C7 again. Wow. So it's, it's classically C566. And I've checked, I make sure I check before sending you, before writing you. I make sure I check like three places. I want to be sure. Are you very sure of this? Please confirm again. No? Okay. I checked three. It's C566. It's classic for FRC. I'll confirm again from different, okay. different, different literature. Okay. Okay. All right. Please take note, it's just within this range. Okay, so and apart from the this thing that is affected, please, I want us to take note of the uh, waiter's tip is one of the features you, should, you shouldn't forget here. They might probably ask you. And apart from that is the reflex is that absent. Because of the absence of the Monroe reflex, the grabs reflex is present. This is used to differentiate it from the, uh, what's it called? the uh, clump case to differentiate it from clump case. So here in clump case, there's no graf grasping reflex, but for Ebb uh, Duchenne palsy, there's presence of grasping reflex. So in MCQ, you should take note, presence of 
let's say grasping reflex. Grabs reflex in the child, and there's absence of moral reflex. Please take notes, please. Okay. So the next thing is the clone care. Clone care. Clone cares. So for the clone cares, it is C8 to T1. I hope I'm correct. Doctors, is C8? Yes, you're correct. That's, that's right. Yeah. Yes. Sorry, C8. C8 to T1 is affected here. And the difference between here is here, let me show us the picture. There is supination of the hand and extension of the, of the hand. Let me, there's a picture here. Let me show us here. Can you see the difference between both of them? Doctors, please, I want us to take notes. For Ebb Duchenne palsy, there's abduction and internal rotation of the shoulder. You can see the internal rotation of the shoulder and there's abduction of it also, okay? And also, the forearm is pronated. You can see pronation, it's pronation, supination. So there's pronation of the hand here. But for clump care, clump care, there is supination of the hand. You can see supination of the end here and extension of the end also. Okay, the end is extended and the finger always have club. You see, finger club, no affections of the shoulder. Sometimes when you check for the finger, you might see finger clubbing. The shoulder is okay here. Okay, and the elbow muscle also sort of intact here, unlike that of Klumkes. Hello. Doctors, can everybody hear me? All right. So this is clump chaos and herb palsy. Do you understand? So I said for clump chaos, there's supination of the hand, there's extension of the uh, extension of the hand, and it's associated with finger clubbing, and absence of uh, presence of moral reflex, and is uh, sorry absence of moral or present, sometimes it can be present, doesn't matter, for clumke. And here, what happens to moral reflex here is absent, but here it could be present, or it could be absent, doesn't matter. But don't forget, no gaps and grasping reflex here. No grasping reflex. We're still going to explain, uh, talk about the reflexes in pediatrics later, is something you should know, or you can take it up on your own and read it. I think you can read it in synopsis. It's a good textbook to read. You can read it in synopsis, it will really help you. Okay, so that is that about the clump curves and the herb palsy. Any question regarding that, doctors? Any question regarding uh, herb, Duchenne palsy, and clump curves? No. Okay, don't forget the image, how to identify it. Please take note, okay? All right, so this is the next image, doctors. You should be able to identify this image. What is this, doctors? And doctor, what image is displayed on the picture? We should all know. Identify. Everybody should type the answers. Hello, doctors. Hello. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Please and clear palate. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, bilateral cleft lip and palate. Why is other doctors not responding? We've done this before. That is why I'm asking doctors. We've done it before. It should be more of Excuse a Excuse me, doctors. Can we see the previous, the, the previous, the one of Epps palsy, the white ball? The, Epp, no, I don't think it, the, the image went off. It went off. It went off, doctor. It went off. But the video will be made up available. So you can get it. Somebody oh, really? left. Cleft lift and palate. Okay. Bilateral cleft lift and palate. Is that respond? Let everybody respond, please. Thank you. All right. Cleft, bilateral cleft lift and palate. Yeah. This is cleft lip and palate, and it's bilateral. You can see here the lips is affected, and the palate is also affected. So it's bilateral cleft lift and palate. You can see it's bilateral. 
you can see bilateral cleft teeth and palate. These are very important stuff you should take. They are very important uh, this thing you should take note. MDCA will probably ask you, they had similar pictures in previous exam. You should be able to explain uh, cleft lip. You should be able to ex explain cleft palate. You should be able to talk about the, what's it called, complications. So let's, quick one, let's just go over it again. Let's go over cleft lip and palate. Cleft lip and palate. So let's talk about it. Lips and palates. So cleft lip and palates, uh, the occurrence varies. The ratio at which each of them happens varies. Do you understand? Cleft lip and palate. Cleft palate, the occurrence is 25%. The occurrence of cleft palate is 25 billion. Both of them occurrence is about 50%. Please take note. And it's important for you to know their complications. It's important for you to know their management. So you should know the two major operations you are to use for the management of both of them. But before talking about the operation, the complications, complications. So what are the complications of cleft lip and palate? Doctors, what are the complications? So one of the things is what? And doctor. Pitch defect. Failure. Somebody say heart failure. Please let's say the common one, the major thing that will happen. Failure to thrive. Yes. Failure to thrive. Failure to thrive. Please, you see this child, the child that is having cleft lip and palate. They can't even eat. They can't even suck very well. So they're having sucking problems. They can't suck. You understand? Because of that, they might have things like problem. malnutrition. So they will have failure to thrive. Failure to thrive. Okay? Please take note. So they may have malnutrition. They can't try. And apart from that, what other things? And doctors, what happens to their teeth? And what happens to their teeth? Their teeth can't poor dentition. Yeah, they will have defective or poor dentition. Defective dentition or poor dentition. Do you understand? And apart from that, somebody who is smart is like that. They can't talk very well. So they have problems talking. Impairments. Speech impairment, yes. Speech impairment. So they can't talk very well. What other things, doctor? When you see a child like that, are, are you, will it be attracting to you? Obviously, no. So one of the things is they are ugly. ugly. Yes, they are ugly. Oh. Ugly. So you see such child of child, you know, be interested, like, oh, cute baby, let me carry you. Even you call the child cute, the mother who might even look at <laughs> what kind of wickedness. Can you put ugly? Is that not too harsh? Eh? What do you say? <laughs> Is the ugly not too harsh? No, 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 okay. You can say, let's say, uh, co Cosme cosmetic, cosmetic yeah, or cosmesis. <laughs> cosmosis, wait, please take note, or let's say, cosmetic problem. Please take note, okay? They may, they might, they might, they, 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 somebody say upper respiratory tract infection. You are absolutely correct, Dr. Dami. Most of them are prone to upper respiratory tract infection. Yes, or respiratory tract infection. Respiratory tract infection. You are absolutely correct, okay? What other things again, doctors, apart from respiratory tract infection? Psychological trauma to the patient. Yes, the psychological parents. trauma. Psychological trauma. There's trauma to the child, to the mother, everybody's psychologically affected. Ah, what kind of this thing? God, this child, I asked so for. I didn't ask for this. You know, people will be traumatized. Please take notes. Please, people will be traumatized. So psychological trauma is very, very important, okay? So what other things? What other things can we remember? Is there any other thing? Otitis, otitis yeah? media. What do you say? Yeah, otitis media. Otitis media. Yeah, some of them are prone to all this infection. Otitis media. Otitis media. Okay? ETC. Okay? So the major thing MDCM I want you to remember is the management. How do you want to manage this condition? There are two operations. We all remember the operation. The first one is the Millard operation. Millard, Millard. Millard operation is mostly used to repair the What cleft lips. Lips, yeah. So yes, for cleft lips, for cleft lips, you use what is called the Millard. 
So you use Millard operation. So for Millard operations, there are rules you must follow. There are rules you must always remember. And that rule is rule of what? Rule of 10. 10. Ten. So somebody is saying, what are the rule of 10s, doctors? 10 weeks ten. old, 10, ten pounds, and then yes. 10 of hemoglobin. 10 weeks old, the child must be 10 weeks old, the child must weigh 10 pounds, okay? And the child must have 10 uh, level of hemoglobin gram per year, right? Gram per year, yeah. yes. That should be. So once you have this criteria, you can proceed to, re re uh, to repair the cleft lips. But for cleft palate, we use an operation called the von what? Doctor. Lagenbeck. Von Lagenbeck. Von Lagenbeck operation. Please take note. MDCN will ask you some of these things in MCQs. About the 10 week, 10, they will ask you in MCQs. Please, I want everybody to take note of that. MCQs. For MCQs. Okay? And for Von Lagenbeck operation. Yes, yeah. Less than 10,000 WBC. Somebody saying something. Yeah? All right. Less so than 10,000. For one game back operation, the range is nine months to one year. 12 months. To not yet. Months. Ah, not one yet. year. One year. Yeah, one year. 12, 12, 12 years old. Okay. Yeah. Within nine to 12 months. And the uh, level of um, the this thing, my, other, other things might vary. Other things does not really, necessarily can. Um, one thing you should remember is the range, the age range where they perform the operation is 9 to 12 months. MDSN will ask you that. You might sit in your MCQs. You understand, doctors? Please take note. That is that about cleft lips and palate. Okay? So the next pictures. The next pictures. The next picture is, doctors, this, this picture came out in one MDSN exam. So... Can you identify this picture? This came out in MDC. Yes, somebody said leprosy. Leprosy. Absolutely correct. This is called the faces lioni. You can see the person's face. It's looking like a face of a lion. Lioni face. Okay? The faces lioni is found in lion face. Absolutely correct. It's found in leprosy. Okay? Faces lioni is found in, in leprosy. Let's take note of that. Okay, doctors. And what you should remember, what's another name for leprosy? They can say Hansen disease. Hansen. Yeah. Hansen disease. Or also known as your leprosy. Leprosy. So there are two types of this leprosy. We have uh us. Leprosy is even caused by what? It's caused by what, doctor? Left yes, it's caused by Mycobacterium leprae. So leprae is caused by Mycobacterium leprae. Apart from that also, you should remember there are two types of it. There's the tuberculum leprosy and there's the um, Lepromatous leprosy. So we have to... Even the borderline. Somebody is saying something. The one that affects the skin and lab. So please take note. The, we have the tuberculous leprosy and the lepromatous leprosy. So we have two types. Oh, okay, just let me write two types. So we have the we have uh, types. We have the tuberculous 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 leprosy. And what do I mean by tuberculous leprosy? Hey, doctor. What do I mean by tuberculous leprosy? What is meant by tuberculous leprosy, doctor? Tuberculous leprosy, very important. Let me explain, doctor. Tuberculous leprosy actually is the one that affects the nerves. The doctor that doctor gives. The one that affects the nerves is the tuberculous leprosy. Take note. The one that affects the nerves. So mostly, the presenting thing is there will be decrease in sensations of nerve. Why the lepromatous leprosy actually affect the immune system? So most of most main manifestations of the lepromatous leprosy will be 
mostly skin manifestation. There will be weakened immune system, weakened immune reaction. So there will be skin manifestation. Please take note. So tuberculosis leprosy, I said it, um, let's see the nerves. The nerves is affected. And apart from being affected, there is decrease, decrease of uh, sensation of nerves. Okay, please take note. There's decrease of sensation of nerves. And for the lepromatous leprosy, lepromatous leprosy. Sorry, the time will be, the time is going to finish soon. Lepromatous leprosy. This weakens the immunity. Let's see. Weaken the immune reaction. And the main manifestation, manifestation is what? The skin. That's a skin manifestation. Okay? And you should know the treatment generally for it. Somebody said he can't see anything. I understand okay. your gift. All right. So the, uh, what is it called? The treatment. Dapson. Dapson. Yes. Some doctors are saying it. Use your Dapson. Fampicin. Your Fampicin. Yeah. Fampicin. Yeah, you're correct, doctor. Fampicin. And what again, doctor? Clovazimine. Clovazimine. So this is the triple therapy we use in management. Yeah, this is triple therapy we use in management of um, leprosy. Do you understand, doctor? Please take notes. These are very important. They are IE. They are stuff you shouldn't forget. You might be giving other pictures. Okay. So this image also is image that do comes out in MDCN. MDCN might ask you a question on this image. You should at least know each part. I think previously they asked about this one, number one. Cautious. Number one is cautious. Okay? You should be able to explain or label this image. These are incision lines. I posted a picture on the group page about incision line. Anybody, did anybody see that pictures I post? I posted the yeah. pictures about incision line. Yeah. Okay? So we are no. going to label, eh? nobody saw it. We saw it. I posted, now, I posted an image about incision line. Yes. Yes. So the number one image is called what, doctor? Cautious. Cautious. Do I need to write that? Good. Let me write it somewhere yeah. here. The first one is the cautious incision. Take notes. We have the cautious. Cautious incision. The number two is called what, doctor? What do you call the number two? Toraco-abdominal. Absolutely correct. The number two is referred to as the Toraco-abdominal toraco incision. Take note. Number three is called what? Midline. Midline. Number three is called what? Everybody agree? Midline. Yes, it's midline, midline incision. It's midline incision. Please, in exam, if you get all these incisions, you must get it right, please. Please, you should know it once and for all. And the number, uh, the next one is what? Four. Number four is what? Hmm? What's number four? Muscle splitting. McBurnies. Okay, this, this is this argument here. This is actually McBurnie incision. I posted the image on the group chat. On the group chat, what was the image? I posted that from the Nigerian textbook, Bado. We all, I have always advised us to go and be reading that textbook. But it's like, doctors don't like that textbook because the textbook is, is very big. It's a very big textbook. I understand Bado is big, but Bado contains stuffs. You understand, doctor? So number four, they write right oblique there in that inside Bado. But it's actually, um, this is actually number six. If you look at number six, it's the same thing. You understand? It is just something like this. It is the same thing. So this is actually a burning incision, just like your uh, grid iron. 
Are you getting? So this is mark burning incision. This is mark burning, or let's say grid iron incision. So you posted here. Yeah? Somebody saying something. Doctor, do you mean number six in the picture you posted? Yes, number six in the picture I posted. Yes, yeah, it's the same thing. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. This incision mm -hmm. is, is drawn along the line. Along, uh, uh, you, you draw a straight line from the umbilicus to the anterior superior iliac spine, the lower third, that's where you cut. You, there can be muscle splitting, it could be any muscle splitting, if you say muscle splitting, but this is actually Mark Bonin incision. Sometimes you can also, this place, depending on the option you are given, if you are given option of grid iron, you can go for grid iron for that localization. If you are given option for Mark Bonin, you can go for Mark Bonin incision. Are you getting what I'm saying, doctor? Please take note. So let's choose McBurnin, McBurnin incision. Okay. So number five. What is number five, doctor? Anesthesia. Anesthesia incision. Our anesthesia incision. Yeah. yeah, this is a popular incision. You know what they use it for? Mostly for cesarean section. This is the this thing you do. And number six is what? And yeah, doctor. Gable. Yeah, gable incision. Absolutely correct. And number seven is what? Number seven, transverse, transverse muzzle splitting. Yeah. 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 Transverse. transverse muzzle splitting incision. Please take notes, please. Uh, number eight is what, doctor? Lens. The lens incision. Lens. Okay. lens incision. And number nine is what? Paramedia incision. Paramedia para umbilicus. Yeah, it's more of para umbilicus. Paramedia, yeah, within the media. Or para umbilicus. Or para umbilica. Umbilica incision. And number nine is what? Mark Everty. Yeah, me, I have, I have an argument about this number nine. Yeah, it's supposed to be Rutherford Morris. Yes, it should be Rutherford Morris in. Because, but the thing about Runda for Morrison incision is, let me draw Runda for Morrison incision for us. Let me draw it here. Runda for Morrison. I talk about number nine or number ten. Number ten. Number ten. Which one? Are, which picture are we talking about? We're talking about number ten, please. Okay. So let me let me go to our whiteboard here. So Runda for Morrison. Let us assume this is the person. Okay. This is the abdomen here. This is the umbilical. Rhonda Ford Morrison incision is always something like this. You understand? It's always like extended down. So I feel that should be Rhonda Ford Morrison incision. I'll call it Rhonda Ford, depending on the option you are giving the exam, but most likely they will give you Rhonda Ford Morrison incision. It's also an incision they use for appendicitis. Okay? Your grid iron, your lens incision, your mark burning incision are all for appendicitis. Okay? So you should take note of that. You understand, doctors? Any question yes. regarding the incision? Where is the writing, please? Ah, the writing, I don't know. It just went off. But well, I believe you are taking notes. went off. Eh? Ah. No, it's <laughs> showing the video, Dr. The Shee. I'll post the video, Dr. Shee. You understand, sir? Yes, sir. I'll post the video. So it will show. To show. To show on the video. Any question again? No. We have like one minute left, too. And we still have some other things to do. I don't think we'll continue today. That's enough for the whole thing done for today. Do you understand? Yes, sir.